three points, it's not four points, it's just one point before we we'll partake together of the communion and finish with the prayer like this. And uh, sometimes I wish that uh, the high tech would work very well, but uh, we just take that one of these days. So. There's pictures. There are some pictures. Well, look at that. Yeah. Almost looked at my fall. Doesn't look like looked at my fall, but almost like this. So it's a fall. There's one word that I want to mention. So it's one point and one word, uh, basically. And that's descender. Going down. Descender. Remember that today is the communion Sunday. The word is descender. So uh, <clears throat> let's go first to the scripture, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8 through 10. Ephesians chapter 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, July 4, <coughs> Ephesians 4, and verse 8. Did you find it? Amen. Amen. This is why it says, When he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. Let's pray. Father, I thank you this morning for your word. We know that you are here in the Senate where two or three gather in my name. And I pray that you open our eyes and allow us to leave this place uh, much stronger than we came in. Uh, knowing the descender is always with us. But I thank you for the mission and the love that you bestow upon us. Yeah. Remove the obstacles. Make us alive and an instrument in your hands, we pray. Thank you, Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Imagine we are looking at the body. And suddenly I'm pointing to you the other side of the body. And I'm saying, look. There's a stream of water that is cascading, falling down. And then we chit chat a little bit and I say, you know what? It comes from the nearby spring. And now what we see looking, we see the slope. <coughs> to the pool at the bottom of the body. Why I'm giving you the picture? Because it's the same at the time of Jesus when he was here physically on the face of this earth. There was a river that was flowing through the promised land. There was a river that was flowing through the promised land. So if you're a good student, you know right away that we are talking about the Jordan River. And it's interesting because a little bit of the history from geography today, It flows from one side of the one side of the Zion to the other one. 
it flows through the promised land and as it goes it gives life to the land did you get what I just said as the river flows through the land it brings life to the land. Wow! Wow! Think for a moment right now. It begins the course in the north part of Mount Hermon and then eventually flows through Galilee that goes through the Jordan Valley, goes through the wilderness of Judea, and finally it enters into the Dead Sea. Dead Sea becomes the end of the river. <coughs> I got excited. I stopped a little bit here and I said, well, let me look into the original language. Because Jordan in the original language means Yarden. You think it's Yard. But it's Yarden. And it comes from the root Hebrew word meaning Yarat. So it's an interesting word, word uh, Y A R A T. Easy. Yarat. Got this. What does it mean? Why do we even talk about this this morning during the communion? I tell you why. Because the meaning of Yarat means to go down and to descend. So literally, Jordan means the descender. River of Jordan goes down. When they said the word Jordan in Hebrew, they say the descender. But you look and you say, Pastor, of all the rivers descend. Oh yeah, I know. But no rivers descend as much as Jordan does. It descends so far that at the end of its journey it comes to the lowest place on earth. The Dead Sea. Did you get it? The river flows down. The Jordan is different than all the other rivers. Why? Because it comes or ends at the lowest point. At the Dead Sea. And yet, when you think right now about geography, it is Jordan's descent. It is Jordan's going down that it gives life to the promised land. You and I, we just learned on Wednesday, are travelers. We said it's contrary to Cain, who was a vagabond and here to hide and run away from God. But Abraham lived by faith. And God reminded him that you don't have to build a house in one spot, but your answer to the situation are two. It's your tent and it's your altar. 
And we say that at one point, uh, when he entered into the promised land, he forgot that God gives us the answer, whatever situation you find yourself in. But sometimes we make the quick decisions, and those quick decisions are worse than the ones that we had in front of us. Because what does he do? He learns that there's a famine, and then he takes his wife, his people, and he goes to Egypt, goes back to the world, what we say, like this. And now he has more challenges in his life. He has to lie. And we have learned that God is an awesome God because very often we put him in a box, but God speaks to Pharaoh. God speaks to the leaders who have nothing to do with the church. If we don't hear, God has others who can tune their ears to the voice of God. Are you still with me? Say, wow. Wow. The point of Abraham was that he had to go back where he started. He had to learn that he is looking for a new city, a heavenly city built by God Himself. Here was just a journey. And we have this attitude, our everyday life will be, will be much more smoother. So here we are, and we are reminded this morning that the river is going down, and in this descendants, it brings life to the promised land. I don't know if you are aware, but there are people around now, yes, who are walking, but they are walking dead. They need life. Why are we here? God has God planted here on my feet, right here, for a reason. He wants you and me to remember that there is a river, I love even the revelation, when you read about the future, John the Apostle was able to see the river that flows from the throne of God. But here we have a picture of something incredible. Because as this Jordan descends, it gives life. And again, you are looking at me and you are saying, my pastor, what, this, what does that really mean to us right now in July? It is through descent that life is given. Are you still with me? As the river goes down, it brings life to the promised land. We are about to partake of the communion. But again, looking at me right now, you are saying, but who is the descendant? Our God. Our God is the descendant. Our God loves us so much that He has solution for you and for me. Once I was lost, once I was dead, but God descends down to your and my level and He brings life in the desert. God brings life today in your situation and my situation. The last word is not 
this doctor, but the last word belongs to our heavenly physician. How about that? What an incredible thing. Yeah. God is the yarder, back to the Hebrew word. God is Jordan. God is the river from heaven. It is the most high who is the descender. Our Lord Jesus was before anything was created was with God. John stands by saying in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. He was up there on high. Only God can fully descend. Only God. Everything else tries. Often it fails. But God. And he humbled himself. And he left the highest points of this universe to come to see you and see me where we are at. Let me read a little bit of the scripture first. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3 says like this, all the way through 9. But it's Philippians 2, verse 3. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, here we are, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing. But taking the very nature of a servant, being made in a human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place, and gave him the name that is above every name. Thank God for Jesus Christ. And I said only God can fully descend. And we just read here, this descendant humbled himself. He was descending from the heights to come into our world, this world. And he was the one who was taking the form of a man. He became like you and I. Just as the Jordan, the river Jordan descends to Galilee, so the descender came to the land of Galilee. And there, he gave life to those in need. My God is able. He brings life in the desert. The same way as Jordan descends from Galilee to the Dead Sea. Jesus Christ came down to the lowest point on earth. From Galilee 
descend their winds or goes to their depths. I mean lower depths. And you know what happened one second day and the third day of oh, praise God. Amen. He said just like he said he rose up. Unbelievable when you think about that right now. That even nature that surrounds us speaks of Jesus. Why? Why did he go there? Why did he receive our judgment upon himself? Why? For God is love. Love. How much our nation needs love. How much you and I need love on a daily basis. It was so cute Thursday morning and the first thing is my boy takes a plate full of food. What does he do? Come straight to my bed. <laughs> right there in the middle of us. That's it. Papa. And then turn on right now. I have to turn and find on YouTube because he wants to watch his cartoons. How about that? I said, let's change it to Noah. Well, he loves some of those stories I tell him. But, and he would tell you which one he wants to see. And so, not this Noah. I want the other Noah. Four and a half years old. Mm -hmm. Just tell me. God is love. But the nature of love is to descend that it might give of itself. And we are here. In descent, we can bring life, we can bring might. We can allow somebody to find love. Why? Because God is love. And I believe now, as the last thing of this one point, God reminds us that we have received the descender in our lives. We are partaking of his love that is going down to our level. And because we receive the life of this Jordan, a living river that flows from the throne of God, He wants you and I to descend, to give a little bit of this life to others. For God is the garden, God is the river. A river is love. It reminds me a little bit later when Peter and John are walking and he's looking at the guy and he says, silver and gold I have gone. But what I have, I give it to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Get out. A river was flowing as they were entering into the temple. <coughs> There might be a river flowing as you are going shopping. Oh, while people are traveling, I tell you, life becomes much more beautiful. Vacations are much more successful. The boating is much better when we can understand that God is love and that love flows through us. Bless someone in the name of Jesus this week. Slow down of talking, but listen. Just listen. And at the end, you will see what, what is going on. Are you still with me? Have a bow our heads for a moment. <coughs>